name is Marina Riley. Uh, I've been teaching at Milburn Middle School for 15, this is my 15th year. Um, I had to get used to the whole idea of doing art virtually last year when COVID hit. Um, so I've come up with some pretty great ways I think that work really well for me for collecting student artwork. Uh, it's a little bit different than some other classes, but I utilize the platform of Google Classroom and I can certainly show you some of the techniques that I've learned. Um, so just follow along. So I'm going to walk you through the process of me making up a Google Classroom. Um, as you can see, I'm logged into my, not my teacher account, but I've actually logged into a separate account that I've made. Um, this is my personal email, but you can still access uh, all of the Google items in your waffle, um, even on a personal email account that's made through Gmail. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the waffle. And if I scroll down, since I'm already in Classroom, you won't see it in here, but you can certainly scroll in your Waffle and Google Classroom will be there for you, available to use. So since I'm in Google Classroom, the best way that I found to collect artwork is through the Classwork tab. In order to get there, let's walk through the steps of actually making um, a class for the group of students you'd like to do this with. I'm going to click on the plus sign. So I'm going to create class. Let's just call it test. I'm going to put subject art. There are some pre-selects in here, but I'm just going to stick with general art for now and click create. You can certainly go back in and fill in any of the other information in the future, and I will show you how to do that. So it automatically will open me up to the classroom that I've just made. Feel free to select a different theme or upload a photo in here. It doesn't only help you to understand which class is which, but um, it also helps on the student um, end, as far as I know. I'm gonna click on the arts, and I always like the paint one. Okay. So I'll go ahead and select that class theme. All right, as I said, you can always go back in and change any of the details. This also is where you would make your Meet codes if you wanna use Google Meet through this classroom. Um, it also gives you some options of the student readability. So if I wanna go ahead and change the class description, to general art, just make sure you save after anything you're updating. Great. As I said, we're gonna be focusing on the classwork tab and um, personally, this is just how I feel. I've been able to successfully give student feedback immediately with their projects. So today I would like to talk about collecting the student artwork. What I usually do is give students about a week to a week and a half to complete a project, depending on how often I'm seeing them or if there's any classes missed. In the announce something to your class section, I usually post in there, um, I try to keep their stream pretty clean. This is called the stream down here. Um, I usually post in there some YouTube video clips if I feel they would help the student out, maybe art history inspiration. Other than that, on the student end, um, typically they work with the classwork tab. So as you see here, I just clicked on classwork. It's in between stream and people. People would have all the students that are in your class as well as any collaborating teachers. Um, and then grades, you can check the individual students' grades, but however, this is a test class, so there's none in there. As I said, I'm gonna be working with the classwork tab um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and click the button create. I don't use a lot of the other options um, material doesn't get graded if you were to post something like that. Uh, I believe you can collect answers to a question. Um, quiz assignment, I've never used. I only really use uh, the assignments. And if it's going to be a topic, I usually post it to the stream. So I'm going to go ahead and click on assignment. When it comes to the assignment, you need to title it. That's not optional. So up here, if you go ahead and highlight the title, 
it'll give you that option to fill it in. Let's just call it portrait for now. The instructions are optional. Personally, what I like to write in the instructions is essentially my rubric. I will um, copy and paste the things that need to be in the assignment in order to be considered for credit. Um, so that might include use of color. That might include um, time on task. That might include something like um, exploration of material and so on and so forth. And all of these things the students can then be checking for within their own assignment before they go ahead and turn in. But again, the instructions are optional. That's up to you if you'd like to put them in there. Now, um, the best way that I found to collect their information is I like to add a Google Drive file. So I'm going to walk you through the process now of collecting um, a Google Drive, making a Google Drive uh, doc that they can then insert their work onto. What I've just done is I went into my waffle again over on my main Google homepage and I clicked on docs. Now, uh, when it brought me to the main document homepage uh, within my drive, I'm just going to click on blank and that's what takes me to this blank document, very similar to a blank Word document. So over here, it helps students and you to keep your drives organized if the document that you're going to be attaching to the assignment is named the same as the assignment. Back in Classwork tab, if you remember, I called it portrait. I'm just going to go ahead and type that in again. And you can see it's located in my drive. What I like to do is click share. Sorry for the wait. And I'm going to copy the link. I'm back again on the assignment uh, on the classwork tab. So I copied the link from the doc. However, if it's within your drive, my drive that I built it in was um, within my school account and the one that I'm building this assignment on is my personal account. So I don't know if it's going to show up in drive. It's just easier for me, which is why I collected the link from the assignment to just click add link and I can go ahead and paste it in there. And there you can see the title doc that I built. I like to keep it plain and simple. I don't put anything else on the doc because really that's the student space to be able to post. Over here it says student can view file. I found that it's much easier if you scroll down and I make a copy for each student. This way within their drive they're going to see um, and on the assignment as well portrait but it'll have their own name next to it. And that's their place to be able to post their work. Here I am back on the dock as if I were in the student view, except for the student view, this would say portrait and their name next to it. Um, again, it's just an easier way for them to locate it within their drive. So what I could do is within this dock, um, you can either have students take a photo of their work um, or if they would like to do it digitally, they can take a screenshot of it, um, depending on what the project is, or you can have them insert an image or even a Google drawing if you would like them to do it digitally using the Google um, drawing options. This document is live and what I like to do sometimes is go ahead in um, while the assignment is still posted and check out each doc just to make sure that students are having um, easy accessibility to them and make sure that they are able to post their work to the doc. If I see it blank for too long, I might try to check in with an individual to make sure that they're not having any trouble um, putting anything into here. Once they actually um, get their artwork up in the dock, then it will automatically save. Like I said, it is live. Um, and then it will attach it to the assignment. Now that we're back on the actual assignment within my classwork tab, um, again, the students will be able to access the portrait dock, but only after you um, physically assign it to them. So before 
you are considering posting the assignment, let's go ahead and talk about this right hand side over here that I'm looking at. Um, I like to assign it to all students, however you can customize that if you would like. For points, depending on if you want it to be point value or ungraded, if it is ungraded on their end, they will see um, once you've checked it and maybe given credit for just participating, um, they will see on their end a resubmit button. That means that you've seen it, you've received the work, um, but it's not getting an actual grade or letter grade. If you would like it to be for a percentage, or out of a total possible points, you can certainly edit that in there. Let's say this is going to be a 50 point project. You can go ahead and select your due date. And you could even customize the time. This way you'll know if anybody turns it in late. Uh, and if you wanna attach a rubric, you're more than welcome to. You can um, access your docs or whatever you need to do. For me, um, my rubric is kind of printed right in here in the instructions of what's needed in order to be considered for, for full credit. Once I click Assign, If I were to just X out of it originally without clicking assign or schedule, this would have shown up as gray, but once it's assigned and visible to students, it's then this dark tone. That means that it is live and from the student stream, you can see it is now posted and available for them to access. I thought that I would just take a moment and show you what it would look like if I were in pro in the progress, in the process of posting an assignment without having it show up for students, which I had mentioned earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and click the create button assignment just as I did before. However, um, I can put in the title. Let's say it's going to be portrait. All right. And if I just close out of the assignment, once I title it, it's gonna automatically save it as a draft, which you can read over here. I will get the same result of it being that lighter gray tone that I had mentioned, as opposed to this portrait project down here, which has been posted, it's that darker gray tone, but it, I will get a similar result if I come over here next to the assign button and I either schedule, of which I can schedule the assignment to post at a later date and time. I just recommend um, if you want it at a really specific time, go about five minutes earlier. I've noticed in my experience that it takes a couple minutes for it to upload. So if you want something to post right at 8 o'clock a.m. for students, maybe put the post time for 7.55. And then you could go ahead and click schedule. Or similar to just clicking the X button over here. I can click save draft. And again, you're gonna notice it will show up as this light gray until it actually posts and then it will turn dark gray. I'm back in the test classroom classwork tab. And as you can see, the one that's been posted, I can see zero turned in and zero assigned. This assigned number will change as soon as you click on the people tab and you actually have students in the class. Once they start to turn in their projects, that number will lessen and this one will start to grow, the turned in number. It's that time that I like to start taking a look through the projects, seeing and making sure that everything from the rubric, which would be over here, um, is in it and then giving them credit out of the total possible number of points. So once I receive um, projects in, what's nice about this is that I can actually go ahead in to the view assignment and you will see all the students in progress work here. If I click on an individual student or on their turned in piece, it will bring me to a page that looks like this. What I just did was made another um, student account just so I can join the classroom and participate in the assignment. So as you can see, this is the student view here. I can see in my classwork tab, actually, let me check the stream first. Here's the assignment posted. Then if I go to the classwork tab, there it is posted again for me. I can see when it is due. 
Um, and here's my own Google Doc that we had made earlier that I said only said portrait for the teacher view, but for student view, now it has my name, then a dash, and then the name of the project. It's just a really easy way for it to be located in my Google Drive. If I click on view assignment, I can see the instructions um, referenced from the rubric. I can see class comments, private comments. These are the comments that all students in the class can see. Private comments are only from and to the teacher. My assignment would be over here. If I would like to add or create any images to put them onto my assignment, this is a great button to click. Some students feel more comfortable accessing the doc and posting anything there. Some may want to use the add create button and just pop a JPEG or .img photo, whatever, into the assignment itself and then click turn in. Again, looking from the teacher view, um, now that I have joined the class as a different student name, I can see MRI is showing up in the students list. And for the classwork tab, if I click on it, in the portrait that's been assigned, their view, they cannot see this one yet. Um, for students, because it's just a draft and I'm the only person who can see and access it unless you have added another teacher over here to the teachers list. Um, otherwise, students can't see it. So I now see that one student has it assigned. If I click on it while the student's working on it, like I said, this is a live doc, so I can see it as they're in. I am in the student portrait view now, the portrait project view of um, what I would see if a student were still working on their assignment or if it's been turned in either way. Um, if they're currently working on it, like I said, this is a live doc. So you will be able to see, here's the little icon that says that Marina Riley, which is my other account, is on the doc adding photos, adding words, sentences, paragraph, whatever. Um, if I would like to give them a little bit of a heads up while they're working, I could um, go into suggesting mode, which I like to highlight something on their doc. And then over here, I can write a little comment personally to them. Or, um, fortunately, it's kind of hard to see the view, but right here below private comments, um, you would be able to write a comment to a student um, and even have a little conversation with them back and forth, depending on how quickly they're going to check their email. Now, um, I had already given a grade here of 45 out of 50. That student maybe saw it. They have the option to resubmit once I give them back their first grade. So if they resubmit, maybe now the student has earned a 50 out of 50, giving them full credit. At that point in time, I can return the project to them. Now that I actually confirm that resubmit grade of 50 out of 50, it automatically will update in the student view. And as you can see, there are some suggestions to talk with your teacher um, using the private comments uh, option over here at the bottom of their page. And now the resubmit button is black. Sometimes I realize that students think that if they see resubmit, they need to resubmit. It's a back and forth constant. Um, once, you, once you give them a grade, I do like to have a conversation with students and just let them know that's the grade you received. You, can, you only need to resubmit if you're looking for more additional credit. Otherwise, this is gonna be what they see. Um, again, some students get confused because um, they see resubmit, they think that it wasn't collected but that would be something that you would talk about with your students. Once I give out credit to the student, what's nice about this is not only are they seeing immediately what they've received um, out of a total po possible points, but I also like to track that right inside uh, my online grading system for parents to also access. Um, and if I feel necessary, I can put an individual comment on the parent um, scene grade using the online grade book that we use. But also, um, if I'm going to write something to the parents, most likely I'm going to write something to the students as well in the private comments so that they're aware um, if there's anything they're missing or credit they might need to um, work up. From to. the student view, you can see that they now understand their project has been graded, and then they can go ahead and click within this assignment and see the grade that they received individually. So I, I think because I'm both a teacher and a student within this class, you're not seeing the three categories that I would see if I had more students within the class, but it would usually be turned in, assigned, and then returned so that I could kind of keep track as the teacher of who I've returned it to and who I might still need to take a look at and grade. 
I just clicked on people here at the top of the teacher screen. And what you can do is if you're kind of curious how an individual student within your class is doing, you can click on their name and it will bring you to each of the projects. Of course, there would be more to this list depending on how many projects you're doing with, this, with a group of students and their total points um, that they received on each as well as the due date. Um, so it's kind of helpful if you want to zero in on a specific student um, to see their progress throughout the cycle using Classroom. What I like to do is, um, as far as projects go, if I have uh, classes at different times of the day and I want their assignments to post at different times, um, I wind up going into the individual assignment, uh, selecting all what's inside of it, copying and pasting that into the exact same assignment again, but for a different class so that um, I can individually post them at different times. As far as I know, I do not think um, Classroom has that option yet. Um, so if you're teaching the same subject matter throughout the day and have it at different times and you don't want everything posting at the same time, it's a good idea to familiarize yourself with that. Otherwise, I like the automaticity that students get to see the grade that they're receiving as soon as I am done grading it, and um, I post that automatically to parents as well. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put all of my information in an attached slide deck so that you can um, contact me if you need any further assistance. I can do my best to try to help you out, but thank you very much. Bye-bye. One further thing I thought I would mention is that sometimes what I like to do is if I have a lot of student work that is exceptional, um, I'll actually form a uh, Google slide deck of those works and then put it out as a virtual bulletin board, virtual art show, whatever you would like to call it. So I'm going to show you that in a couple quick steps right now. Much like if I were going to go to my Google Classroom, what I did on my main Google homepage was just clicked on my waffle and went to slides. They're called slides. Uh, very similar to a PowerPoint presentation, but this one's Google friendly. So um, here what I like to do is just kind of add in a couple different slides just to start me off, depending on how many you would like in your art show. Over here, you can pick the theme on the right-hand side. Wait for that to load, great. And you'll notice that the home page usually has the um, design that's over here with the theme. And then each additional page will have a small kind of uh, connection to that original, but um, a simpler design. Usually what I will do is then take out any of the text, unless I would like to put student names in, and then simply insert images. You can upload from your computer, search the web. Oops. Um, insert photos, insert drive. If I'm taking screenshots of the student's work though, over from the classroom, um, it should wind up on my desktop and then I can just pop those photos right in here. And it's pretty easy to share that out. Once you name it. And you can get a link um, or insert or share it out to only certain people. Thank you.